All right, so I just recorded this entire video and then literally right as I ended it, I realized that my mic was unplugged. So here's take two. <laughs> I remember the days when I only cared about three things in the world. Black Ops 2, my guinea pig, and of course, Minecraft. But in the seven years since those days, the classic blocky survival game has evolved and contorted into an entirely new beast. And for someone who hasn't played seriously since around version 1.4, coming back into the game is overwhelming. What the hell is that? Heh, <laughs> no! With all the new creatures, blocks, and gameplay mechanics though, it's safe to say that Minecraft has evolved into an almost entirely different game, while somehow simultaneously keeping the feel that many of us fell in love with back in the day. Yet with two mainstream versions of the game, that being Bedrock Edition, written on DirectX 11, and then there's Java Edition, using the OpenGL renderer to accelerate the Java-based graphical rasterization. On the surface, the games actually look and feel pretty similar, almost identical. But when you take a look under the hood, the technology powering both these games is actually incredibly different, and it's incredible that both games can maintain the similarities despite the polar opposite approaches to how they display their worlds. Alright, so to help us understand the differences between the two versions of Minecraft, I wrote two Hello World programs in the languages used to program each game respectively. Looking at Java, it seems pretty simple and short only taking 10 lines to complete the basic operation. C++, however, is able to condense it down to just 6 lines. This is significant because Java, like Python, is an interpreted language, meaning that the code you write in software first has to be interpreted by the JDK and translated into a different format before being compiled down into hardware instructions. Meanwhile, code written in C and C++ are compiled straight into hardware instructions, so there's no middleman. This is the difference between an interpreted language and a compiled language, and what this means is that when running your program, you have an extra layer running between your code and the bare metal, which increases processing times. This is why complex software, such as video games for example, are generally written in compiled languages, because it saves processing time and gives you more direct access to the circuitry in your system. And when looking at graphics APIs such as DirectX, OpenGL, and the still somewhat new Vulkan, it makes a ton of sense as to why these developers are choosing software tools that aren't necessarily as easy to develop on, because they end up saving a bunch of performance due to the nature of accessing hardware through APIs. And if you want proof as to the difference in performance between the two versions, here's a comparison of me flying through the world in creative mode. Both games are set to 4K and have all their graphical settings set to max, with the render distance set to 32 chunks. And right off the bat, the DirectX 11 version is performing much more competently. But I did notice that CPU usage in Bedrock Edition is significantly higher than Java Edition. And keep in mind, I'm running both these games on an i7-9700K. The thing is, with CPU and GPU usage this low in the Java Edition, it shows us that a ton of performance is being left on the table, and as a result the frame rate is more erratic and tends to suddenly drop. Meanwhile, Bedrock Edition uses more overall system resources, but the game is running at a locked 60fps. So with both versions of the game, my CPU obviously isn't holding back performance all that much, but higher utilization running code that's functionally identical, combined with overall improved performance, shows that our hardware is able to stretch its legs more when using DirectX 11. And with Java Edition, you'd expect the frame rate to be at a locked 60Hz as well, given the lower CPU utilization. But because Java Edition is written in, well, Java, that means the actual software is what's holding performance back, not necessarily the hardware. I know it's kind of a strange thing to say, but our performance is being held back because our hardware is being underutilized and this is thanks to the higher level hardware access of Java. In terms of a metaphor, the closest thing that I could come up with is trying to talk to someone who speaks a different language. And like computer programming, you can either go through some sort of translation process to get your ideas across, oder sie können die Sprache lernen, was mehr Zeit in Anspruch nimmt. Yeah, exactly. 
While programming with lower level languages such as C or C++ offers greater benefits and control of specific hardware access, they're also a pain to properly learn. And this is why interpreted languages are so popular nowadays. Many of us probably first started programming in either Java or Python. And both these languages are great for smaller size projects or a program that isn't running complex or latency dependent code. This video though isn't meant to just bag on Java, because I actually like using Python and also Java just to a lesser extent. They're great when you're first starting off because you don't have to deal with abstract concepts such as pointers on nearly the same level, but the cost to this is overall slower performance. It doesn't really matter all that much when you're writing a Hello World program, but if you're programming a AAA game, it's probably not the best choice. And tying this all back into Minecraft, it's pretty obvious that the performance profile between the two versions is drastically different. And thanks to the concepts I explained earlier, DirectX has allowed Mojang to further optimize their code and have lower level access to the silicon in your chips. It's incredibly impressive that both games function nearly identically, despite the differences in their core technology. But now all we need is Minecraft programmed with command blocks. So thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. I know this video was another super technical one, but I thought it was something that would be interesting to cover, especially going deep into the software side of things to explore what's going on behind the scenes. But it was a lot of fun talking, and if you want to learn more about computer hardware or software, then the annotations on screen are a great place to start. Thanks for spending your time with me, and thanks for watching.